Okay, uh, good morning everyone and welcome to Beauty and the Beast, turning big data into beautiful insights. This being Tableau Conference, you probably thought Carsten would wear a nice big yellow ball gown and I would be a bit more hairy, but we thought we'll focus on the demo instead. My name is Eva Murray, I'm Head of BI and Tableau Zen Master at XSL. Yeah, and I'm Carsten Whiteman, I'm Technical Alliance Manager and Global Partner in Amazon and Beat, also at XSL. Okay, we'll do without the clicker. Uh, what we want to show you in this demo is that you don't have to be afraid of big data and that in fact you can treat it just like any other data set. You might have to be a little bit clever about filtering, but we'll show you how to do that as well and that's the real beauty. So let's move over to Tableau. over to Tableau. That's the beauty of technology, right? Whenever you want to show off something live, it doesn't work. Ah, there we go. We go. That's a familiar sight. So um, we have prepared uh, just a bunch of different things, and I'm going to start with an environmental data set. These are measuring stations from all around the world, and what you see here is my connection to XSL in the top left corner, so that's the connection string. I've selected a schema called GHCN, and in there are a number of different tables out of which I have joined six different tables. In the top right corner, you can see it is really a live connection, it's not an extract. So let's get started. How much data are we actually dealing with? Well, we all know what to do. We'll look at our number of records. We have 2.13 billion records in this data set. Um, it is a live connection. So we're, we're aiming for some instant results here as we go and visualize this data. And what I want to show you is really the analyst experience. If you're asking questions of your data, you don't want to wait. You don't want to have a spinner. You just want the results and keep moving on. So I'm going to build a number of different charts to answer, answer, a few, answer a few questions uh, before I hand over to Carsten. So I said we have global measuring stations in this data set. Let's see where they all are. And all I need to do is bring in my latitude and my longitude. And Tableau draws me a beautiful world map with actually no map background at all. This is a map with very recognizable countries that are just drawn from data points. And when I looked at it, I really liked it, so I thought I'd show it to you guys. But really getting into it, let's focus on the US only. And hopefully you've all seen the keynote, and they talked a little bit about sets this morning. Um, I'm using them a lot for filtering, so I've created a filter for the US mainland. Sorry, Alaska and Hawaii, you just skew the map too much. So we're going to just look at the mainland in the US. And again, I'm going to bring in my latitude and my longitude and that creates the US map. Again, I don't have a map background that's deliberate and it just shows where the different measuring stations are. And these stations measure different things like rainfall and sunshine, wind, temperature, hail, all that kind of stuff. But for now, I'm just gonna focus on wind speed and sunshine hours. First up, what's the windiest place in the US? Some of you might know, even if you say it, I can't hear you. So I'm just gonna tell you, it's Mount Washington in New Hampshire. And I'm going to bring that in as a set first. So out of the different stations, there's going to be Mount Washington. It's that big red dot in the middle. But again, let's bring in our latitude and longitude to see where that actually is, for those of you who don't know. And oops, we'll shift the map a little bit to include New York, just as a reference point. The reason I'm using these um, sets to filter is because otherwise I would have to pick Mount Washington from a long list of names of measuring stations and that's just going to take too long. So I did that in advance um, so that we have a nice and snappy demo here. Now what I want to understand is what, which months have the highest average wind speeds at Mount Washington. This viz is going to take a few more fields than the previous ones. Again I'm going to bring in my Mount Washington as a filter and I'm gonna start building. So I created a field called day of year. That comes into my columns. And I'm also gonna bring in my measure date field 
because I want to have it separated into months just so that we can, because you know, if I say it's day number 124, I don't know who knows what month it actually belongs to. So let's break it down. It looks a bit funky, but what we need to do is just change the axis and make it independent so that we get one date along it, the way. Um, I also want to, I said I want to talk about wind, so I created a set for wind. And that, because we have all these different, I think we have about 50 different measurements in there, um, this reduces it down to just the wind measurement. And now I can bring in my wind speed in miles per hour and show that. Now that's a nice little line, but it aggregates across all the different years. So let's bring in more detail into our details shelf. And here I'm going to add year as a level of detail so that I get a single line for every year. Now that's a big mess. Let's change and include a table calculation. I'm going to add a table calculation. And what I want is a moving average. So I'm going to go moving calculation. I'll have my average. I'm going to include 29. That looks a lot better. And there's one last thing to do because maybe we're curious what's actually happening this year. We can see that in winter it's a lot windier than in summer. It kind of goes down as the temperatures get up, go up and then uh, goes back up as we head towards autumn. So um, I have my most recent year as a true false. I'm just going to put that on color. And ta-da! You can see in black. Um, so that's true. So that um, equates to 2018 and all the other years are still in there for reference, so we can see where does 2018 lie compared to all the other years. Okay, very nice. Um, what if we want to have this kind of view, but a little bit more simple? Let's create a heat map that just shows that very simply. And I hope you're still remembering we are working with 2.1 billion records, so any query I send to the database still has to say, which points do I need to retrieve from here? Um, but of course, in Tableau, we're not showing 2.1 billion data points. We don't need all of that. So again, let's work with the sets. I could have duplicated the field, but I thought we'll just keep going along nicely. And we've got our wind. And this time, I want uh, my, oh, hang on. Bring that in, so months. And I don't actually remember what I put on columns, but let's just use years. Oh, hang on, it was the other way around. I did put months on columns and I put years on rows. There we go. Okay, and now all that's left to do is putting my wind speed on color and I get a nice heat map. Um, I, would change, I could change the color if I want to, but it doesn't really matter. Um, again, we can see the strip in the middle that shows me that the wind speeds are lower, so the colors, is li the colors are lighter. But what this also shows me is where the gaps are. So that in 1996, we seem to have no measurements at all for quite a few months. And there might have just been you know, a replacement or they didn't measure for some reason. Um, but this is interesting because it does show you the gaps. Okay. Moving on from here, we've talked about wind, but really what we like is sunshine as well. So what's the sunniest place in the US? It's a place, and I hope I pronounce this correctly, called La Junta Municipal Airport in Arizona. Um, oh, sorry, Colorado. So let's bring that in as well and create a quick map so everyone knows where we are. And again, I'm just going to shift around a little bit. So. That's the spot, the orange one. And um, the question is, how many sunshine hours does this place get? So we'll go from there, we'll bring in our set. Oh, I've created a set also again for my measurement. And I will go to my measure date. But this time I want it at the day level, the individual day over time. There's only two and a half years of data uh, in this data set. And now let's bring in the total sunshine hours. Now, we have something really cool looking on the left. We have something very wrong looking on the bottom right. I will exclude those values because they're clearly, I mean, zero sunshine, sunshine hours just doesn't seem to make any sense. So let's get rid of those. And this is what we get. And I really like this curve because it is so regular and symmetrical. There are three outliers. So we have an outlier in May 98, in July 99, 
in August 2000. Just keep that in mind while we have this nice, um, nice curve going on. So if we, and now let's maybe just, oh no, if I duplicate it, I lose all my formatting. Um, let's go to the next page. We're gonna, again, create a heat map. So let's drag these things on again. We've got our place, we have our sunshine hours, and this time we are gonna go down here. And I believe that's just let's just do that. I don't think that's right, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. No, I think actually doing this wrong again. Um, it's not the weekday; it's the actual day. There we go. This one I wanted. That doesn't quite look like I expected. But anyhow, we'll just roll with it. So um, we have our month across the top. And what, what I expected is a much more regular pattern that for some reason didn't come out. But just pretend it looks like I wanted it to look. Uh, we do have funky things. Oh, I know why. Because I do need to duplicate it because we have those really funky um, things that I excluded over there. So let's duplicate it. Let's bring those to color. We can do this on the fly. So this is going to be the month. And this is going to be a date. And there we go. And no line. It's automatic. That's better. And now we just need to reverse the color and we'll make it orange. Not the it's going to go. Okay, phew. Lucky me. Um, and I'm gonna just put a border around it. Um, so what you see, hopefully, is there's a little bit of a spot. This is the May 90, oh, I didn't put the year in. And this is the May outlier, then we have a July outlier. And down at the bottom, there's our August outlier. So they're not as pronounced here, but they're still kind of visible. And um, yeah, that's where I'm gonna finish this bit. But we have our wind and we have our sunshine. Carsten is going to look at what if we want a really calm place that's really sunny and he's going to talk to you about Skyline. Right, so um, let's first look at, at some data. So the, what you saw already is um, working on 2.1 mil billion records. Um, I take that same data set, um, I rearranged it a little bit but because if you look at the data that we used as a fact table, I'll just drag it in here. <clears throat> the big one and just do an update so you can just see how that data looks like is um, we have a, a station that reports the data we have a um, date that um, um, reports the or it shows the reporting date then there's a value and an element ID so it's it's all one big table where you have all the different elements in there um, and I wanted to bring up as Eva said we are thinking about moving from to a different place maybe where it's rather calm in concerning the wind, but nice and sunny. So I created a little view on that. Um, just remove that. Where I just um, <coughs> created some stations or aggregated it a little bit. Um, and it's, this is also just the live data, um, which shows me the stations and the average wind and average sunshine that we had in that data independent of the day, just the average, so we kind of like know um, which place might be a good one. So if we put that on a, pl um, gonna use that data, and I forgot one thing, first I should put up, as I gonna change a little bit with the stations, that's what we're interested in. Um, we also wanna use the states, and then gonna use my stations wind sun. Um, the stations contains all the data, the information about this station. I just have to just the join here because this is what Tableau does not always get right in, co in case we're using views and don't have a foreign key relationship predefined. So let's just <coughs> look at, I want to have the sun on the roads, the wind on the columns, and if we want to use a scatter plot, I'll make that dimension. So these are now the values, the different values that we have, and I did it wrong way around, okay. I um, actually wanted to 
switch that. The sun is to the right and wind is to the, to the top. Um, and maybe just for the reference, have the station name on the tooltip so we can check. These are now all the different values that we collected. Apparently, there's some data in there where, or some stations that are pitch black throughout the day and night. Um, we, we're going to ignore that for now, but we have one outlier in terms of wind, which is, as you can see, Mount Washington. So that's the one. And then to the far right with the month's most sunshine hours, that's the Junta Municipal Airport. So we got those two. Now we have this collection of different areas we could move to. Each has a um, certain wind speed and a certain sunshine hour, or wind and, and sunshine in general. And we want to look for the optimum. Where's the best place to live? The Junta is maybe not bad, but there's, not, there's other places where it's fewer wind. So maybe we are more up to that. Um, of course, in a data set that is, has only this many points, we can assume that it's probably along the line that goes at the bottom. We don't have too many points here, so we could probably manually choose the optimum for us. But sometimes, imagine if you have a million link, uh, dots up there, which one is the optimum, or what are at least the, the dots that are on that bottom line, um, which is something that we call skyline. So now I'm going to switch over, because what is skyline, right? Um, here we go. Um, <clears throat> You often have the challenge, and this graph shows you that thing as well. It goes about the SP500 um, shares, um, where we have lots of um, dots comparing volatility of these versus return in percent. And of course, you want to have choose something that's maybe less risky, that would be more to the left, but has a higher return, that would be more to the top. Um, but which one is the best one? So if you try to filter that, um, if you set the filters wrong, you can either have data flooding, that is too many results to choose from. If you have too strong filters, you might run up, uh, end up with no results at all. Um, you probably then might start, start to weigh things, so say that maybe volatility is not as important as um, the return, so maybe give volatility a lower low weight in your filters. Um, but as soon as you have not only just two dimensions, but more, um, this gets quite difficult and uh, cumbersome. So what we have done in Exasol actually is implement something that we call Skyline. Or as if you would have to choose from one of these, you would take your own preference. So it's also called preference um, um, SQL. That means we don't put a hard filter on it, but it looks a little bit different. We say we prefer something. So let me show that to you. <coughs> If I just create a custom SQL, and I just create it here, um, I would say I want to have from my station Sun Wind, those are the ones that we are looking at, Wind Sun. Um, and then not usually you would say where, right? You apply a filter. But in this case, we say preferring. And what are we preferring? We are preferring a high average sun. We want to have lots of sunshine plus low average wind. We want to have not as much wind as possible, uh, or not, not too much wind. I'm just going to do a little preview on that to see whether that actually gives us some insights already, limits down the list of stations. Um, and it actually does. I know it's a little bit small um, here. But as you can see, we're now to, down to about 10 stations that has, per se, uh, that form that bottom line um, in our data set. So we can now only have to choose from 10 different places where we can then apply our own preference to say, OK, La Junta is maybe not the optimum because, yes, it's nice and sunny, but also a little bit too windy for us. We want to go to a place that's a little bit less windy. And now, how do we visualize that? Actually, very simple. I just prepared a view. It's like a cooking show, right? You got prepared something. You always have prepared something. So let me remove those stations when sun and just pull in my skyline stations. As we call this algorithm the skyline, um, I also have to adjust the, the join again um, to make sure. So what I did is I took that SQL that, that I just showed you and joined it with my, with my other winds, uh, the, 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 the former view that I had, where I had all the wind stations, and just said, whatever stations is in my list of preferred stations, I just put a one in there, and for everything else, it's a zero. So what we can now do, if we go to a new sheet, <coughs> just 
fill that up here. Again, we can create our, um, our little scatter plot. Dimensional. This one too. So we have again what we saw before. But now, if we have to take this preferred and put it, for example, on color, and maybe to make it more visible also on size. We now have the list of our stations that basically form the optimum. There's no station better than this that has more sunshine and less wind, right? The next one is down here. It has less wind, but also less sunshine. So these are, this is the list of optima. We can ignore those at the zero for now because I don't think anybody of us will live, want to live in a place where it's just pitch black all day and night. So these are the ones that we're looking at. And we can also, and of course, now create a map of that to kind of take a look at where is it actually? Where are potential places that we can live in? So why don't we just take latitude and longitude? And Eva created, um, created a set. I forgot mine. So let's just um, filter that down quickly. So Alabama, Alaska, we are not. Alberta, Zambia, no. Arizona, Arkansas. I'll just quickly go through the list and put in all the states we want to live in. Sorry. Or uh, just exclude Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, we <laughs> go, Hawaii would you, You're going, just keep going. <laughs> So we have quite a lot of states in here, Manitoba, Maryland. Micronesia would probably also be a nice place to live in, but for now we're looking just at mainland US. We've got many states. New Brunswick, I'm sure. Jersey, New York, Newfoundland, maybe not. That's also, as you can see, there are also some states in there which are actually Canadian states. Yeah, the state field basically picked up everything that has something yeah. it's, that's called a state. So, yeah. And you're probably thinking, why didn't he just drag across the map and do like a visual select? Yeah. And I've tried that before, but sometimes that really just takes, is quite taxing on Tableau. So I also avoided that. Okay, so we got that. So these are the places for now where we have those metadata. As you can see, there are less stations that Eva showed on her US map, so we don't have that many stations that actually collect on wind, uh, data on wind and sun. But now again, what we can do is um, drag that on color and maybe also on size. And now we can nicely see these are the spots that According to our preference in having low, a lot of sunshine but low wind, these are the places in the US we could live in. Uh, we could choose from quite some in Arizona, um, in Louisiana actually one, one in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Colorado. And we could also tuck the station name on it, but that's usually something that's um, just put the station name on the tool tab so we can look at where is that actually. Um, so that was Missoula International Airport, you didn't, so those are the different stations. So this is the power of preference or Scala Analytics. If you have a lot of um, data with several dimensions where you cannot apply a hard filter to just filter down to one optimum, but you basically have a, a, a certain list of optima, potential optima that you want to look at, Skyline allows you to very quickly limit your data down to a certain number of points, which you then usually either manually or have a different algorithm that is applied to that list, can then choose and um, go from there. So you're probably wondering, like, what is all this stuff behind the scenes? I don't know how many of you have talked to us in the past or know much about um, Exosol. So we'll very quickly in the next uh, five minutes or so go through a little bit of architecture to give you some reference. Exosol is a database. It's plain and simple, um, an analytics database, and it's the fastest in-memory database out there. So you can stick XSL between your source systems, be it your CRM system, social media data, whatever it may be, and Tableau. And then in Tableau, you connect live, no more extracts. I know extracts were in the keynote, but um, I didn't clap much because I think let's just go live and let's not worry about all this extract business. You load your data into XSL, and then you connect live. And that's really all the magic there is. There is a native connector in Tableau. 
to XSL, it's been around for a while. The only thing you need is the database driver that you need to download to make it all work. Right. Um, so when you look at what we are, we kind of like the, the, the hub or the heart of your analytics. Um, we're not only working with Tableau, we have a whole ecosystem, as usually, um, and as you all know, you also don't just have one single tool in place in your company, you're using a multitude, Clothora. We try to be, we want to be the heart of your analytics, enabling you to do more with the data, working on a live connection with Tableau, enabling you to do also data science in the database, extracting more stuff, um, just find all the insights that you need to make your business run better. And for that, technology-wise, we come with a little set of um, uh, things that we have. We have, a, uh, in addition to the regular database stuff, we have a user-defined um, function framework. Um, just a little teaser, um, if you come to our booth by noon, there'll be a little presentation from Hashgaber from Data Street Partners about using that. Um, actually, we have open APIs. You can use any programming language inside Accessol if you want, if you want to enhance the functionality. Data scientists used Python and R, uh, maybe you're more fancy with Julia, Scala, Java, whatever. You can do that in the database and thus even enhance your experience and the uh, things you can do with that. We're a highly parallel, massive parallel database management system, unlimited scalability. Whatever you need to do, you can do with us. Um, big data sets, we just showed one. Um, there are several others and we have customers working the trillion records range on a live connection and doing stuff there. Um, and of course, integration, use your own tools, whatever you have, whatever you need, you can do and um, build stuff for the database. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Good. That's okay. Um, so now it's your turn. We actually want you to get your hands on it. Don't, data is only fun if you can play with it. Now let me show you what we have. We have a system, it's called DataViz. DataViz is accessible by anyone who registers. That's where we host public data sets that are very large. I think the smallest is 50 million records. I will also bring up the URL in a larger font in a couple of minutes. I'm just going to quickly show you. It's on our website, xsl.com slash dataviz. And what we have there is the way to get access is you literally just have to register. We need at least your email address so we can send you the, the credentials to log into the database. You will receive an email with a connection string, your username and password. And then, like I said, you just need the drive, the database driver to make it work on your machine with Tableau. Um, there's, this is just a viz I built on um, Chicago taxis, but if I go a little bit further down, we have a bunch of existing data sets. We have taxi data about ch in Chicago and New York. We have prescriptions data about medical prescriptions in the UK. Ozone data, it's a very rich data set for the US. Um, global daily temperatures. We have the Zillow home value index that was used in IronViz last year. We have something about the London Boris bikes. And this weather data we work with today, we're also going to make available for people to play with. So, swap again. Um, here is the URL if you're interested in doing that. We love seeing your results. Um, Tableau Public can only handle 15 million records and it can only handle extracts. But if you have created a viz that you would love to embed somewhere, you just contact me and we'll make it happen because we actually have a server where we can host vizs with a live connection on the internet that you can embed and do things with. So we'd love for you to use this. We enjoy seeing people do this stuff, um, getting hands-on with the database. This is the easiest way to do it. You can download our product and try it out, load your own data, but if you just want to play with big data up front, um, then this is the way to go. So as we finish, we would love to have your feedback. You can just go ahead, five stars. No, just kidding. Um, we love data, we love feedback, and we would like to hear your comments, see what we should do next year. Whether we should come in costume, the options are there. So let us know what you think. And we thank you for coming. Our booth is right across, just in front of Altrix. Um, we have a demo there at 12, like Carsten mentioned, from one of our partners. And then this afternoon at 3.30. 3.30, that's right. So visit us there. You, we can also do demos in between ad hoc, but those are silent disco ones that we have prepared. And they're short 10 minute presentations, so they shouldn't take up too much of your time. Enjoy the conference and hopefully we'll see you at Data Night Out. Thank, Thank you. you.